What's up, comic and pop culture fans? This is James with Mint Hunter Comics, and I got three separate collections in all at once. So it's been a little crazy this week, but I wanted to show you some of the highlights here. And I will tell you that one of the collections, ironically the smallest one, was a collection in which the grades were so high that I might have some serious submitting on my hands. I'm going to show you what we got. We've got one of two first appearances of Black Cat. I've got the death of Aunt May. I've got the classic, beautiful cover of 375. 376 is the preview of Spider-Man 2099. I have some ASM, here's 272. Did get a nice little batch of ASM. This is the one where Peter asks MJ to marry him. She actually says no in that issue, and I think two issues later, she reconsiders. Then we have the classic Spider-Man punching Hulk in the nuts issue. Thanks, Todd McFarlane. We've got the first appearance of Carnage here. Very nice. This, by the way, is the collection in which pretty much if it was after 1980, he had the best copies he could have possibly found, and I don't think he touched them since then. So we've definitely got some potential submit submissions on our hands here. ASM 364, uh, 236, 227. And the cool thing about this, he put every last book in Mylar. By the way, that is an underrated black cat cover. I love the perspectives on that 226 right there. Keeping it moving, we have the classic meeting between Spidey and Moon Knight. We have, I think this one's the second appearance of the black cat. 167. Hey look, another first appearance of the black cat. And one of my favorite Spidey books, the first clone right there. Unfortunately, it does have a corner crunch, which is too bad because otherwise that book is in remarkable condition. Very nice. 144. 128. 127. We have an annual, looks like it's number 18. And we're moving on. We've got Alpha Flight 106. That is uh, the first gay Marvel character, North Star, right there. Avengers 239, the classic celebrity crossover issue. We had the first appearance of Rogue in a beautiful potential 9.8 candidate. So that one's definitely going out. First, Renee Montoya. Bane breaks Batman's back in Nightfall, part 11. Here's another candidate. First appearance of Cassandra Cain, Batman 567. That's a tough book to get it. This one looks perfect. Now, this is something like the second or third comic book appearance of Harley Quinn. Uh, one of my favorite books, first appearance of Orca. That book is legendarily difficult to find in a perfect grade because the spine's always jacked up. And I'm going to kind of skip over this next book, but basically we do have a full run of Batman Hush. I'm going to show you probably the most notable book here, which is going to be 609. That's the actual first appearance of Hush. Let me get through the rest of this. This is another one of the more notable ones, 612. And that goes all the way up to the end of the issue with 619, of which he had both of the variants. Next up, we've got Killing Joke. It is a first print. It looks gorgeous. I also have the first canon Harley Quinn comic book appearance, the one-shot Batman Harley Quinn, some of Alex Ross's most iconic work. We also have Vengeance of Bane. This is the first appearance of Bane. It is the second print, which is going to bring the value down a bit. Then we have the first full appearance of Damian Wayne. We have the first appearance in a cameo of Damian Wayne in actual comics. Don't forget that hardcover of Son of the Demon is technically the first actual appearance of Damian Wayne and came out 
decades earlier. Captain America keys don't have too many of those, but uh, the ones that are keys he had, and he sent them to me. This guy primarily had an 80s and 90s collection. So I basically sent him a list. I said, do you have these ones? Of that list, he had like a fourth of them. And I said, okay, send them. And he sent them to me all in Mylar, which is great. 323, we've got some US agent keys here. Now this is something really cool. I've actually never owned this book before. So a little lesson here, be on the lookout for creatures of the id. Most people don't know what this is. That has some value, be aware. Okay, speaking of value, I have a bunch of Crow. Crow Volume 1, Pain and Fear. Volume 2, Irony and Despair. Volume 3, Death. Now, these Crow books do have some notable value. Most people do know that, but the Crow stuff, it, it, it's good stuff. If you can find it, that's an immediate yes. I also have Flesh and Blood, the Crow. Part 2. Part three, and Dead Time, part one, two, and three. Very nice. Most importantly, and what could be the greatest book of the entire collection, I think has to go to this absolutely gorgeous copy of the crow that is the first appearance of the crow that is nothing to scoff at that book does quite well all right then we have some daredevil keys and some daredevil filler too 186 187 hard to uh top the crow here look at that love that cover 184 i might be sending that one in as well we have the classic punisher frank miller cover of popping that hole right through mr murdoch there Awesome. We've got 182. 181 is the death of Electra, and that is a gradable copy to 176. This one had a couple condition issues, but I think that's the first appearance of Stick. 175, 174. And then we got another big one coming. Ready? We have the first appearance of Electra, which, do you know, is actually misspelled on the cover. See that C in the middle of that? That is uh, not how you spell that. So that's very awesome. We also have the very first Frank Miller on Daredevil right here. And that's just box one of four of the highlights I wanted to show you. This next box, I'm going to switch it up. This is from a different collection of kind of more indie books, but they were great ones. So first appearance of Robotech. First time I've ever owned it. Uh, we have a wizard magazine, not too many keys, but it's the preview of Truth, red, white, and black, by a whole five months. So it's quite earlier than the actual Truth issue. We have the second appearance of Ghost Rider and the first appearance of P P Punisher, Predator, in comics. I've got the first appearance of Banshee, X-Men 28. Man, these are really in no particular order, are they? We have a JLA number one. That's pretty incredible right there. That's going to be, that's a winner. Uh, we have Justice League 22, classic Crisis on Earth 2 book right there. And we've got the first appearance of Red Tornado, Justice League 64. This collection was filled with things I don't see very often. This full run of Dark Horse Incredibles is way more expensive than you'd think. Especially since that has duplicates, turns out that's actually a pretty decent pickup. I've also got a Beavis and Butthead number one. This Lady Mechanica number one is actually pretty valuable. It's actually issue zero. This one's issue number one. Be on the lookout for some of these indies. Uh, first or debatable first appearance of Sakaar, the son of Hulk, and I actually had two of them. Now, this was really neat. I have issues one through eight of Grendel. That is the first appearance of the second Grendel right there. I had another one that was almost complete. So we've got that one's the complete one. This is the almost complete one. That's issue uh, one through six. Here's something I've never owned before. Hero Discovered, 
Mage. Now, this is the first appearance of Kevin Matchstick. It also includes in this run the first ever comic of Grendel in color. Uh, so that was really cool to find that full run. And it's not something I see very often. And frankly, it's not something I knew about. So I learned something there. We have the first appearance of Tim Drake. Half of this is coming to claim sales. Half of this is going to my antique shop. So anything you see with an actual price sticker is going to the shop. Uh, this is the first appearance of He Who Remains. I also have a 1 in 10 variant of X-23. First solo X-23 issue. This one's the first meeting of Clint Barton and Kate Bishop. Young Avengers presents number six. This one's just a bit of an iconic cover. The issue that came, I think, is it once before is the bigger key, but that's a good one too. This one's not great condition, but it is the first appearance of Batman Beyond. Be wary, this Six Flag Stamps copy is a fraction of the value as the actual direct edition and actually came out some months after. First appearance of Randall Spector, which is Moon Knight's brother. I also have the award-winning series from Tom King, Vision number one. I'm just showing you number one, but I do have a full run. I do have the first full appearance in order, Origin of Shadow Man from Valiant. I also have Exo Man of War number one. Usually whenever I get Valiant stuff in, these books are the ones that have been ripped out of there. So these are not the ones I usually see. First appearance of Eternal Warrior. So it was nice to actually get these. First appearance of Nimrod. X-Men 191. First appearance, first appearance of Josiah X, who is the son of Isaiah Bradley in The Crew, number one. Speaking of Isaiah Bradley, let's get his first appearance up there with Truth, Red, White, and Black. You might see that again. I'm also expanding the antique shop, and with it, I'm including an entire Simpsons long box. So I'm going to be putting a lot more Simpsons stuff up, and I'm looking forward to it. Darkwing Duck, be on the lookout for that one. It's a limited series. Here's a very recent book, and you would be shocked at the values on that. First adaptation of Frozen. For such a new book, I was uh, kind of mind blown by the value. That being said, it's pretty scarce, so I get it. We got a new stand, First Gargoyles. This Mad Max is another adaptation book that has a small value with it. Here's some more of those Daredevils. This is actually a partial reprint of Giant Size X-Men 1, and in the second half, they expand on it. So that's a really cool book. We also have the first appearance of the Marauders. And so that's 211. Watch out. You always want 211 and 210. A lot of people miss 210. 210 is the first cameo of the Marauders. We've got a Werewolf by Night 32. No, I'm sorry, 31. This is a preview of 32, though, which includes the first Moon Knight. I also have Wonder Man's First ever solo series in Newsstand. Uh, this is the first solo story, which featured in Marvel Premiere. It's issue 55, Wonder Man. Yep, I said I had another truth, number one. There you go. Uh, I do have the first appearance of the Dino Bots, Transformers, number eight. And watch out for reprints. This one has a small value with it, especially if you can find the... Uh, in near mint like this. So Tales to Astonish, number one, it reprints, obviously, Submariner, number one. Strange Academy, number 14, first appearance of Gas Lamp. Watch out for Strange Academy. There's a lot of value in that run as a whole. Uh, Star Wars, number four, number one, two, and three weren't in there, but four, five, and six were, so. Um, actually, five and six are nice enough to get graded. Sleepwalker, number one, first appearance of Sleepwalker. Watch out for Ultimate Marvel Team-Up. This is the first appearance of the Ultimate Nick Fury, which was completely swapped to look like uh, what you might call Samuel L. Jackson for the first time. This is a classic What If book with the cosmic suit. People like that one a lot. I do have the first appearance of Tombstone. Here's the first appearance of Madripoor. Got a lot of those in from this collection. I'm choosing to just show you one. 
And then this is simply just a classic Eric Larson cover that's quite scarce. It's issue number seven of Nova. I don't know which volume of Nova that is, but it's from 1999. I also have the first Morbius solo series. If you can, try to find it still polybagged and newsstand. It's going to have a little value. First Mystique solo issue. Phoenix Untold Story, which reprints her death and actually expands on it with commentary. I have Planet of the Apes number one, or I should say Adventures on the Planet of the Apes number one. Nice value on that one. First appearance of Hector Bautista, the death row inmate chosen to possess time stones. Yeah, that's something I didn't know. I don't know more recent books like that. So this collection taught me a bit. I'm always learning from the collections I get in. Iron Man 100, classic cover. This is the first issue of the Armor Wars. Marvel Premier 44 is the first solo Jack of Hearts. Or is that the first appearance of Jack of Hearts? I actually forget. I do have a Micronauts number one, first appearance of the Micronauts. And I have Punisher, the limited series number two, and I think in a separate box you're gonna see I have one through four. Now here's where it says, look, it says, Number two in a five-issue limited series, they originally thought it would only be four. So Punisher 1 says one of a four-issue limited series. We've got a full run of Legends that includes the first Amanda Waller, first new Suicide Squad, Justice League International. A lot going on in just that six-issue miniseries. I also have the full run of Freedom Fighters from DC. That's pretty cool. That's a little heavy, so I'm going to put it up here. Full run with both issues of number one of John Byrne's Man of Steel. This is actually the first variant comic ever. So I have one and the variant. And we've got a full run of Crisis on Infinite Earths. Still one of the greatest maxi series ever written. Up next is another really rare one. First published Sam Keith in comics. And it's the first appearance of Max the Hare, which is the prototype for the character Max from Sam Keith. That's pretty special. This is the first appearance of Power Rangers in comics. Here's another first appearance of the second Grendel. Now watch this. We do have Dragon Ball issue two, second ever Dragon Ball comic. Most importantly, this might be the second biggest book in this entire haul. Believe it or not, it could be even more valuable than the JLA number one. Uh, first Dragon Ball comic book, and it might be good enough to get graded. And if it's not, I have a reader copy as well. Doesn't really get much better than this. If that wasn't enough, I do have the first US Dragon Ball Z. So we have Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Also quite valuable, the one See how it's blank down there? The one with the barcode is the best. That's the most valuable of them all. So uh, just the last few books I showed you uh, puts, puts a lot of money out there. Uh, th these are bigger books and certainly ones you don't see too often. So keep an eye out. Commit those to memory, folks. Star Slayer, number one, first appearance in Origin of Star Slayer, one page ad for the Rocketeer. I also have issue two, first appearance and origin of the Rocketeer. Number three, I've got a couple of those actually, and it looks like it's going to be a full run of Star Slayer. Oop, maybe not. I do have the first cameo of Grimjack, which is in Warp issue five. Next up is Star Slayer issue 10, the first full appearance of Grimjack. That's stuff I don't get in too often, so it's really great to see those. It was, it was a fun to get a collection more than just, you know, the typical Marvel DC. Uh, here we have Miracle Man number 17. This is the one where Neil Gaiman comes on to the title. We've also got Miracle Man number 9, first appearance of Winter, the child of Miracle Man, and it includes an incredibly realistic, shown, they, they don't hide anything, birth in this issue. It even has a warning on the cover. I read the book just to make sure, and yep, sure enough, it shows everything. It was a good time for me to pick up this. Unfortunately, this second volume of Amazing Fantasy was missing issue 15, which is a very valuable book. 
But I do have the first appearance of Aranga and a couple other notable characters in this lesser picked up run. This is one through 14. I'll probably move those as a bundle. I really don't know. And then I've got a couple duplicates. So I'm gonna show you some of the singled out issues. There's Arana, first appearance. First appearance of the new Scorpion, Carmilla Black. And then the first appearance of Nina Price, who is the niece of Werewolf by Night. We also have a Black Widow number one, first Yelena Belova, in a debatable first. Champions 19 is Amka Aliak, Inuit girl who becomes Snow Guard. That's her first appearance right there. 22 is Amadeus Cho becoming the code name Braun. With Ghost Rider 29, first meeting of Ghost Rider and Doctor Strange. This was another one I had to read. Uh, this is considered a classic story of Ghost Rider Racing Death titled The Death Race. So I took a second and uh, read that one, and my God, yeah, that was a classic for sure. I will remember that one. First appearance of Danny Ketch, second Marvel Ghost Rider. Then we have a full run of Jim Henson's Dark Crystal adaptation. There are two issues. There you go. Two-part arc. Doc Strange 30 is the first appearance of the Dweller in Darkness. First appearance of Nate Richards, FF273. Here we go. Strange Tales 174, first appearance of the Golem. First Hercules, uh, what you would call solo issue right there. And then here we have the first appearance of Sabra. Sabra, Sabra, I'm not really sure how to pronounce her character. She might actually be coming to the MCU. That could be interesting. Uh, not the best condition on this one, but we do have the first ever team up between Hulk and She-Hulk. If you ever see later printings of this Thor one, try to grab the fourth printing. It is the most valuable and least printed of them all. That one is. First appearance of Mr. Sinister, X-Men 221. First appearance of Archangel, or I guess you could kind of say first full appearance or second appearance. We also have the award-winning and incredible cover, Batman Adventures Holiday Special, Bruce Timm. Did get a little Silver Age Justice League. And I always love this cover because it's a really early Owl Man cover. And yeah, there you go. Uh, we have an Adam Hughes, JSA Classified. You'd be surprised by the value on that. Here's a book that's actually uh, tanked in value. First appearance of Vigilante. That's become quite affordable. First full appearance of Blackfire and Adrian Chase. By the way, if you don't know, Adrian Chase is Vigilante. This is the first appearance of Adrian Chase. Here's the first cameo of Blackfire, the sister of Starfire. Here's a big one, a newsy first appearance of Nightwing. That is Teen Titans number 44, or actually Tales of Teen Titans 44. That's, that's gonna work. We also have the first appearance of Jericho, who is the son of Deathstroke. That is a newsy, that's gonna help our value. And here's one that I've always thought was massively undervalued. That's that first appearance of Terra. A great cover, too. There's a lot going on for it. Lasting character, popular character. Don't really understand the value. 28 is her first cover appearance. And second appearance. Oh, here's another first Terra. All right, and 21 is the first uh, Brother Blood and Mother Mayhem. Newsy. This is the third appearance of Deathstroke right here, issue number 10. Issue number 9 is the second appearance of Deathstroke. And it's more affordable than you'd think. Then we have the first Legion of the Unliving and the third ever appearance of Wonder Man with Avengers 131. We do have the movie adaptation of Blade Runner. Another one that's got a nice value there. I do have the very final issue of Ghost Rider right there. It's also the death of Ghost Rider. And I have a 1 in 50 variant of the origin of Swordmaster, team up of Shang-Chi and Swordmaster, first appearance of Chayu, the Dark Elder God, Swordmaster number one. Cool. That works.
I also have the third appearance of Ghost Rider with Marvel Spotlight number seven. I do have G.I. Joe number two, first appearance of Quinn, Tracker, and Mercenary. I don't know G.I. Joe books too well, so I kind of learned a lot on this submission. We have a couple copies of number six, which is one of the ones that has some more value. And then 11, which is the first appearance of Destro, Doc, Gung Ho, Airborne, Snow Job, and Wild Bill. I've got a few of those. Uh, I know this one is the first appearance of Lady J. I believe there is even more to this key than just that, but there you go. Got a bunch of those. I'll be scouting to see if any, any possible 9-8 candidates out of those. Then we have Lockjaw and the uh, Pet Avengers, first appearance of the Pet Avengers. Watch out for that one. That has a bigger value than you'd think. First appearance of Galacta, Marvel Assistant Sized Spectacular, number two. Not number one, number two. You guys might know what this is, Muppet Babies, Jim Henson's Muppet Babies. No one picked this up because no one cared. Um, so finding an issue 10 when they did all the anniversary variants, actually it's the most expensive of them all because no one was reading that run. Do have a bunch of these outlawed number ones. This is a much smaller key. I had a box of smaller keys that I'm really trying to only show you the big stuff. So this one slipped in here, but that, if you want to know, is the first appearance of Cradle, acronym Cradle. Uh, here, here's our limited series I was mentioning. Limited series Punisher, all the painted covers, four, three, two, and then obviously the biggest one being number one. And man, it works in my favor that that's a newsstand as well. All right, we do have a timeless first appearance of Spawn, Spawn 1. That looks good enough to be a 9-9, nine, nine, so that's definitely going out. Speaking of reprints, Marvel Tales 106, uh, probably the most valuable book in the whole Marvel Tales run, and that looks like a 9-8, so that might have to go out. Reprints the first appearance of Punisher. And here we got the first appearance of the White Rabbit, and we're going to show you the last short box of all the best stuff. First appearance of Typhoid Mary. I actually have two copies of that, which I'll circle back to. This one is actually the first appearance of Spider-Man 2099 in a preview. It's not ASM 365. Hellblazer number one. That's a great one. First appearance of the new Fantastic Four in 347. Another first Danny Ketch. The second or the third Harley Quinn in comics. I kind of forget. Canon, that is. Resurrection of Electra. Here's a classic cover. All this Frank Miller goodness. 191. 227 is the one where Kingpin learns that Daredevil is Matt Murdock. That's a great issue. 230 is the sister Maggie being revealed to be Daredevil's mother. Here's that other Typhoid Mary I was mentioning. First Professor Hulk right there. Then we have the first appearance of the Thunderbolts. That's not nothing. That book is down quite a bit, but it's still a pretty big one. Here's our Watchmen number one. I do have a full run of that, but I'm only going to just show you number one. First appearance of everybody. Here's the Demon in the Bottle, Iron Man as a alcoholic. Here's a Weapon X key, 74. That's the second best one if you don't have 72. Now we have all the Mark Platt, or is it Mark Splat? No, it is Mark Platt. Uh, Moon Knight issues, which just have a nice value on them. Mainly just popular because of the covers. There's no real key significance, but they do command a nice value. Second or third appearance of the New Mutants, it's New Mutants number one. Remember, they got their first appearance in one of the graphic novels. First appearance of Cable in a cameo. First appearance of Cable, but it is the second printing. I do also have a full run of Infinity Gauntlet, but I'm only going to just uh, show you issue number one. I do have the second appearance of Cloak and Dagger. Spectacular Spidey 69. Spectacular number 90 ties for the first ever black suit Spidey, so that's a pretty good issue. Punisher's first ever ongoing series, issue number one. Then we have the first appearance of Microchip. And we got the classic Battle of Punisher and Daredevil. You guys know what that is. A Spidey number one. 
And then we have the Thor frog ones, the ones where Thor gets turned into a frog, 65 and 66. This ain't nothing. Here we go. 129. First appearance of Kitty Pride. That's a big one. I also have the classic Days of Future Past, issue 141. Very nice. Another first appearance of Nimrod. 193. First appearance of Cable as a Baby in 201, of which I have two copies of. Second full appearance of Lady Deathstrike. This is the one where she gets the adamantium graft. And we have a classic John Romita Jr. X-Men cover. I just got a 9-8 out of that, actually. Here's another first appearance of the Marauders. I think this is the first battle of Sabretooth and Wolverine. And I have part two, which has that on the cover right here. Uh, first appearance of Mr. Sinister. First appearance of Jubilee. And we have 256 and 257, which are both the Psylocke-related X-Men keys. First full or second appearance of Bishop. This is the one with the cover that everyone likes. I guess this would then be called the third appearance of Bishop, 267. The classic Jim Lee cover of X-Men 268. Love that cover. All right, then we have the first appearance of Bishop in cameo, but also on the cover. We have our Wolverine number one, number 80, first appearance of X-23. And then we got some classic covers like 27, 24, 17, all which could go great with the new custom label. So I think I'm going to send those out. I'm forgetting her name. That's too bad. Silver Fox. Okay. And then we have the classic number eight. That one also might have to go get graded. First appearance of Rough House and Blood Sport. First appearance of the Muramasa Blade with number two. And our last few books here, we got the first appearance of Omega Red, second appearance of Domino, first appearance of Domino, another first Archangel, the actual first Archangel, first appearance of Apocalypse, a couple X-Factor number ones, the classic Jim Lee X-Men 11, and our last two books is going to go to the first meeting of Deadpool and Wolverine. And then the first appearance of Onslaught, signed by Mark Wade. And you know what? I mentioned I got three collections all at once. I have not even processed all of it, so this is most of it. I thought these, for being the highlights, is a pretty good one. So I can't wait to get these to a claim sale. I will see you at the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out and keep on hunting. Make sure to come down to Sentiment Depot Antiques and Collectibles where I'm set up with all of my comics located at 238 West Delaware Ave, Pennington, New Jersey. Open every day except for Monday and Tuesday. Enjoy 10% off from Wednesday to Friday. See you there.